No, that's right, actually. Um, no, but I think the teams were paying for it. Yeah, they're supposed to. They're supposed to, but some teams, I won't name names, um, some teams <laughs> sent their drivers the bill for like the season's worth of testing. Yeah, and I that's think crazy. the price was a little bit exaggerated by the sums of it, no? Yeah, it was many thousands. Oh, gosh. No, I, I was counting my tests at some point, and I, I lost count now, but I know I'm over 60. Since since like yeah. summer last year when it all started, obviously going away for the first race in Red Bull Ring. And the thing is, it never gets better. Like every no, single no. time, it hurts just like like the first time. Yeah, I, yeah thought, we, I thought they were getting better, and then the last one I had, the guy absolutely put it to the back of my head. So yeah, proper jobs worth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is rough, isn't it? Like they are yeah. bad, really bad. You need to be charming. Mm. to the person and then they're just like they'll take it easy on you yeah yeah so how was um speaking about the racing how was the first i mean i watched it obviously so i know your results but how was the first weekend how was it with your new team um yeah goods and bad points i guess well you know the boys at dams well jay yeah is damien your engineer yep damien's my race engineer and uh they're a good bunch of guys good bunch of characters um obviously f2 this year has changed a bit we have three race weekends uh three races per weekend and uh it's chaotic like every yeah. five minutes there's like a <laughs> there's a twist you know something there's a safety car which ruins your strategy or something like that and, and it almost makes qualifying irrelevant because you can win from the back like for example in the second race obviously i had an engine mechanical failure in the first race had to start last for the second race and at one point we were p2 <laughs> and uh, yeah i couldn't i couldn't really tell you why we were just like things worked out we had a safety car which obviously favored the other strategy but um yeah, it was just all up and down and also with the third race as well we started p13 and at one moment we were leading and yeah, it's just it's all happening I, I was actually a little bit tired out just watching it because you know like no, normally there's <laughs> normally there's just the two race feature race and sprint race first race you've got your pit stop the second race is not boring but it's you know it's not the pit stop strategy race that it, the first one is but after two races two sprint races on a Saturday I, I couldn't tell you what had happened by the time we were you were starting the race the third race I'd lost track of who won what race who was on the podium in what race what the strategies were like who was on what tire compound because, I mean, what, which was the race? Was it Joe in race two that tried to do the race on the soft tyre, the sprint race on the soft tyre? Yeah, me you and Joe. Well? Yeah, yeah, you tried yeah. that as well, yeah. <laughs> I remember looking going, well, that, well, that's not going to work, is it? And I think I even texted you to say, what the hell went on there? How did that tyre last? Well, it's, uh, it's really odd, actually. They brought a new hard tyre for the season. And in theory, it is, it's a stiffer compound, but it also holds more temperature, so... Um, the thermal degradation is is huge, especially at Bahrain when the track temperature is like 48 to 50 degrees. And so for whatever reason, the soft tire was probably eventually it would drop off. But for as long as we had rubber on the tire, the soft tire was just as good as the hard tire. So it's it was strange, but it's also what we learned in testing. And I was really surprised that only me and Joe went for it because it was one of those things where, you know, we'd proven that it works in testing. And I don't think anyone really had the, the balls to really, yeah. you know, do it in the race, but it seemed to work. Well, I was, honestly, when I saw, I turned, only turned on the race uh, a bit like two minutes before the start of that second one. When I saw Joe and, yeah, yourself on the soft tire, I was assuming you guys were doing a pit stop. Um, because I wasn't, I haven't been at the track. I haven't been even asking you guys about testing because why, why would I? um so i didn't know that it was because of the temperature reason i, I assumed you were going to pit and when when you carried on i was like this, this, that's not going to work just watching yeah i was quite keen to do a pit stop actually but it was like you know obviously starting from the back in that race you've got nothing to lose really yeah um and i was i was open to do anything you know when you're in that situation you're starting towards the back you have nothing to lose so um yeah i mean it's just a shame there was a safety car so close to the end because everyone who started on the hards could then switch to the softs if it wasn't for that i i wouldn't be surprised to be on the podium in that race just because the the hard 
tires were so just slow. Yeah. Yeah. And how was the yeah. third race again? I can't remember who. I just remember Oscar's crash with Dan. Um, um, what happened in the third race? Oh, I was leading at one point. Yeah. I. Uh... <laughs> 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 for a very brief remember. moment yeah for a very brief moment i was leading um it was yeah we started on the softs again i think myself and i don't know maybe six or seven other people started on the softs and um i was the last one to box and there was a safety car uh, right. yeah yeah i yeah. remember it now yeah so i i boxed for for the primes and then um and then the safety car came in at the end of that lap. So I had no time to get any temp into the tires. And um, yeah, it was chaos that first lap because it was a massive headwind down to the first corner and everyone just came past me like I was standing still, if you remember well. Um, yeah. But it's, it is actually kind of fun because it's like you don't really know what's going to happen. And at the same time, if you manage, manage everything well, manage your tires, you could just have a massive um, speed difference towards the end and just come through. So, like, it's never done. Yeah. I just remember two guys, I think, got seriously blessed with the safety car in that last race. I think Bashaw was one of them. Um, someone else came came out in the lead after the pit stop, I think. That was uh, me, mate. Was it you? You got blessed, <laughs> yeah. It was you, yeah. You did get blessed. <laughs> Apart from, yeah, I didn't yeah, think I was about on the, the wrong, tire temp. Yeah. I was on the wrong tyres, though, yeah. Yeah, true. Because you were, because you like, you gained time effectively, didn't you? Um, yeah, because everyone was gained calling a bunch of time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think it's, I think it's really good how unpredictable F2 is. It's, oh, it's great of, to watch. Oh, yeah. I'd hate to drive in it. Well, honestly, when I did that one race in Sochi then last year, I had no idea what was going on. No, no. At zero. And that yeah, was the, what, what did you think of that? The whole F2 concept, well, mate? I was, I was honestly a bit like, because I'm F3 veteran, obviously. Um, <laughs> he's just sort of used to just, you know, F3, there's no pit stop. Everyone's on the same tire compound. Um, you know, the Deggies, especially in the last few years, wasn't massive. Um, so it was like, you get where you are, lap one, it's like, that's kind of it, especially if there's the, you know, on the track with DRS. So it was always, it was always like, you knew exactly where you were, what you had to do, because it, it was just a sprint. I, mean, I know F2 is a sprint as well. But yeah, when I, I started in that race in Sochi on the ultra soft, I think. And I was assuming that that was going to, you know, fall off after three laps. So there I am protecting them like from the first corner and lap 12 or 13, the race, I'm still on the tire, still doing my fastest lap thinking what the hell's going on here. And then I come do my pit stop, come out and I only see one car for the rest of the race. Um, it was Robert. And I just followed him to the checkered flag. And I was just like, I finished 12, which was a good result really in the HWA at the time. But I was like, I seen the race. I was like, I don't know what really what happened. Like <laughs> I just finished 12th. I don't know how the other guys got ahead of me or how the other ones were behind me. Um, yeah. It's just weird, I guess. But but yeah, I mean, it's great to watch it too. There's nothing worse than than going too easy on your tyres. Like it, it's very easy to go too hard, which everyone knows about and the commentator will point out. But there's there's nothing worse than just taking it too easy and just losing lap time for nothing. Like those yeah. ultra softs and Sochi, for whatever reason, they were working really well. I remember yeah. that. Well, we made them. We made the mistake in quality as well. I'm not doing a second lap on them because um, I was doing all right after the first half. I was in the top ten, and then I dropped, and then I selected reverse after that first lap. <laughs> Fell back down a bit, but but yeah. So how's it? How's it? Obviously, tie deck this year um, it seemed to be a bit better than last year. I would say. I know it's a bit different, with, but it's a thermal deck thing rather than a wear thing by the looks of it. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult to say because we've only driven in Bahrain so far, which is the worst usually, but um, it's definitely not easy. I mean, if you're used to F3, it's, uh, it's a tough one because you have, to take it, you have to take it easy, clearly. But I think mm -hmm. when we go to some more normal tracks, um, or now we go to Monaco and Baku, they're not so normal, but um, maybe... What's the next one after that? Not even sure. But um, when we go to the European tracks, it should be a bit more towards F3. It should come towards the rookies a wee bit and the mm -hmm. guys that push a bit too hard. Um, but it's definitely not easy, mate. It's like um, 
it's it's a gamble every time, you know. Yeah. You win some, you lose some when it comes to tie deck. Yeah, I mean, I saw, I think it was Oscar Piastri tweeted saying he did a faster race pace in the test in F3 the year before than he did in F2 in the race this year. Yeah, also in Barcelona last year, I remember him in F3, he won the race, the sprint race, which was a faster time than the F2 sprint race. And it was like, God, that's embarrassing. I mean, it, 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 sounds, it sounds surprising. In a way, I'm actually not surprised on, the, on those kind of tracks, like a bit tight and twisty, high, high speed, you know, not as smooth. And saying that, I remember in Paul Ricard, when we were racing in F3 together, um, there was that, for whatever reason, there was massive deg in F3. Do you remember that? When you oh, well, catapulted me. <laughs> well, hey, mate, we're not going to talk about it. I'm not oh, going to talk about it. I remember that. No, nah, mate, no, nah, no, not talking about it. It's like, it's my low point. You know, I, I don't crash. I, I don't do it. I, I just don't make mistakes like that. Jake, so, I, would have, I would have been proud of that one. That was it. Yeah. Well, if, uh, we could laugh at it now, but if it come off, it would have been fucking, you know, fantastic. <laughs> it, would have been, yeah. it would have been amazing. Yeah, it would have, if it come off, which it didn't. Um, well, I mean, you just hit the wrong Prima car, mate. <laughs> yeah, if you had it, I'd have given you a high five. But... <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't know. I don't know how. I still don't know what. Well, I know what I did wrong, but yeah, you were just you were just as like you know on it as I was though. I was assuming you assume I was racing somebody that was going to back out of it on the outside. Nah, mate, no uh, chance. No, <laughs> I couldn't even see you, mate. No, I couldn't. Well, I think we both lost. I lost you behind Robert at the time. Anyway, we're getting a bit off topic here, but yeah, just so everyone knows the listing, I took out Marcus in that first race to Paul Ricard twenty not nineteen. Yeah, 2019. Yeah, 2019. And I mean, I mean, I was I was on pole. I was rapid that weekend, and um, and I, I went off into the lead from JN for about five seconds, I think, four or five seconds, and then I just slowly, you know, the red car slowly caught me up. Yeah, I mean, like also in the race afterwards, and on the Sunday race, I don't know why, but we were so fast. Like, yeah, we, I stalled at the beginning of the oh, Sunday yeah. race. Yeah. That. And then came through to fifth or something ridiculous like that. Wow. And yeah. I couldn't even tell you why. Like we were just flying. I remember thinking when I was in, coming through the field, um, I was thinking like, I'm so quick right now. I cannot imagine where my teammates are because they they obviously didn't stall at the beginning. So they probably yeah. wanted to. Uh, yeah. Terrible feeling, but yeah. Sometimes there's so many... Uh times where i think it doesn't really make sense in pirelli world like why you put pace or why you didn't i mean I, that same particular weekend i remember i did a practice time on used hard tires that wasn't really that far off what i did in quali for the pole on brand new mediums and it's just like i couldn't i couldn't tell you why i couldn't tell you why i only gained like two tenths or something I know, mate. There's been you have to tell me about that. I mean, yeah. I completely understand. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just for it's again. It's just I guess for people listening or watching, it's like the Pirellis are so temperature sensitive, um, and especially well until midway through last year, there was absolute zero sensors on the car, wasn't there? For you to for the team or or driver to sort of be able to say or feel what's happening, whether you're too low, too high. The window's so small that almost it feels, they feel like almost the same, whether you're too cold or too hot sometimes, you're just not getting no grip. But then if you get it in the window, yeah. like especially Primus seem very good at doing more consistently, you can just, you just gain half a second, like snap your fingers. Yeah, well, it makes me, um, it makes me nostalgic for about the, uh, the casting days, you know, like back in, um, you know, back in casting, you just no matter what what temperature the track was or the tires, whatever, you'd still be there or thereabouts. Yeah. And then even you could probably improve on old tires. You know, you didn't you didn't need to bang on a set of new tires every time if you wanted to go quicker. No. Nah. Um, I mean, when I went out on Tuesday, it was like you just go straight out of the pits, wheel spin and slide and scrub as much as you can, <laughs> just to get any kind of temperature into it, and then you just go faster and faster and faster and faster every single lap, because you just get better. You get better, but the tires stay with you. But you just don't have that in Pirelli world. I was speaking to um, Joe about this the other day, Guan Yu Zhu, and uh, he's like, yeah, "It's probably not my story to tell, but you know what? Whatever." <laughs> yeah, come on. Um, <laughs> he's saying that his first test in um, Fiorano in F4. He forgot to warm up the tires 
on new tyres. Yeah. And uh, he literally went out the box and from the first corner was pushing like normal because that's what you do in karting. Yeah. Like you just yeah. go out, you go out the box full blast and just, just survive. Yeah. And he reckons he went out the box on new tyre and just spun out straight away, turn one. That's it. In the gravel.